In this lesson, I describe why data and asset ownership are important and the responsibilities of those involved. Whenever someone has to do something and no one is specifically responsible, then it's likely that no one will perform the task. Governance, role management, acceptable use, and data retention decisions with oversight require explicit personnel assignments. This is a model of the information asset lifecycle from the NIST SP1800-5B. Each phase of this cycle requires a named decision maker and policy implementer. Security lifecycle tasks needing ownership include classification and categorization, incident response, vulnerability management, risk management, configuration management, and change management. An organization's CEO is the ultimate asset owner. However, information asset tasks are usually delegated to department heads. For example, the VP of Finance would be the financial systems and data owner. Employee data and related management systems would be owned by the VP of HR. The owner delegates are responsible for maintaining an asset inventory, classifying and categorizing systems and data, implementing reasonable and appropriate safeguards that both manage risk and ensure compliance, ensuring proper access for business roles related to the owned systems and data, and ensuring the disabling of access after employee termination. A key process that enables ownership tasks is change management. The purpose of change management is to ensure critical business process operability and security are not broken by changes to information assets. Change management starts with a policy that specifies who must review and sign off on changes. Configuration management ensures systems and other assets are properly inventoried. Each item in the inventory has regularly updated version and vulnerability management information. Updating asset configuration documentation should be part of change management. Software Asset Management, or SAM, is part of continuous asset monitoring. It includes applications written by the organization or purchased from third parties. It also includes system and IoT firmware. SAM includes maintaining an application inventory in order to understand associated risks. Management of each application requires vulnerability scans, a required review of announced vulnerabilities, and associated threat modeling. Each vulnerability needs prioritization. SAM documentation must also include current patch levels and any compensating controls used to manage unpatched vulnerability risk. Part of SAM is managing licenses. License management maintains ethical business practices and avoids fines and litigation. Asset owners should implement procedures for tracking licenses and installed copies. Further, Periodic scans are needed to ensure all installed copies are accounted for. Adopting and managing software licenses starts with selecting the license best suited for each application. Which license is best depends on how it's used. The CISSP Common Body of Knowledge describes five different licensing models. The first is the EULA, or End User Licensing Agreement. The EULA is the most popular licensing model and constitutes a legal contract between the application vendor and the application user. It requires a one-to-one -one license. For each user, there must be a purchase license. A site license is usually more cost-effective. It enables an organization to purchase a license that covers all intended users. The license costs depend on the negotiated number of potential users. This approach largely avoids penalties associated with copyright violations. However, there is usually some method of tracking the number of actual users and a procedure for managing decreases or increases in license costs. The previous two licenses often do not include maintenance or regular upgrades. Subscription licenses are renewed periodically instead of the customer simply buying user licenses. 
Subscription licenses can apply to specific users or at the enterprise level. Like site licenses, there are usually user review and license adjustments included in the license agreement. The three previous licenses are valid for a period and then require renewal. A perpetual license is good forever. This does not necessarily apply to support and updates. Support, updates, and upgrades are usually limited in time and may require renewals. Perpetual licenses typically specify the application version covered and updates end when the version is retired by the vendor. Consumptive licenses are a pay-as-you-go model. An organization starts with a negotiated license fee based on the expected number of users. The number of users is reviewed periodically and the cost is adjusted based on the actual number of users. This adjustment is built into the contract and the prices are negotiated in advance. This license model requires the most management effort. Effective management of the applications installed requires a well-maintained software library. The software library is likely the responsibility of a centralized authority, but it relies on asset owners to keep it updated. The software library consists of a list of all tested and approved applications. It also includes the users authorized to use each application. Maintaining the library supports the use of whitelisting. Whitelisting is implemented by preventing users from installing any application except those in the approved software library. Understanding the applications installed and the related versions helps security identify and manage vulnerabilities. This includes tracking all third-party modules used in internally developed applications. Finally, asset management requires knowing what assets the organization has. In addition to strong integration into acquisition activities, asset tracking needs regular scans of the network to understand what is connected. This enables identifying rogue devices and applications that can introduce unmanaged vulnerabilities. Organizations should compare scan reports to application library content and take steps to remediate differences. Measures of the effectiveness of asset monitoring and reporting include the frequency with which devices are checked or missing updates. Frequency depends on the criticality of the associated system, the data involved, and the APL applications installed. Another measure is how often the application asset inventories are updated. Updates are needed as part of acquisition and change management processes. Finally, a big measure of the effectiveness of asset management procedures is the percentage of discovered software not listed in the APL. That's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.